Hi, it's Sata here. In this video, I will share some tips for designing realistic interiors in games. It is an experimental video where I mix knowledge of level design and environment design, made especially for solo devs who need to handle both, no matter which engine they use. However, if you are using Unity and are already on the Victorian Mansion environment by B4 Studio, and you don't want to spend dozens of hours building your own level, you can find a fully built Victorian mansion created by me on the Asset Store. It is a ready to use level of Victorian style building, perfect for horrors, mystery or exploration games. It includes 90 unique full furnished rooms and corridors, consistent decoration and lighting and ready to use scripts. With this level, you can instantly test your game mechanics, use it as a reference for your own level design or include it directly in your project. You will find the purchase link in the description below. And now, let's move on to the tutorial. Let's start with something that many beginners have problem when making interiors. Scale. It sounds simple. In Unity, one unit equals one meter. So, in theory, you could just copy the real-world dimension. But in practice, things are different. Look, here we have a room 3 by 4 meters with a ceiling 2.5 meters high. Now, let's place a standard player capsule about 2 meters tall. And suddenly, the room feels small. So why real-world scale doesn't work here? One reason is a camera fields of view. In reality, our vision work a bit different than a camera in the game. The angle where we see clearly is about 60 degrees, but our perception of movement and light reach up to 180 degrees. In other words, our eyes and brain capture the whole scene, including what happened on the sides. In games, especially at first-person perspective, this range is much more limited. A normal camera field of view is about 60 degrees vertically, so we miss about 120 degrees on the sides, and this makes rooms feel smaller and narrower than in real life. That is why designers often make room bigger or they reduce the size of the player's character to compensate this effect and to make the scene feel clear and natural for the player. There is an unwritten rule that is the best to adjust the scale of the player or the environment by about 20-30% relative to the real world dimension to make everything look natural. But the scale also depends on whether you are in the first person or third person view. So right at the very beginning you need to decide which camera the player will use in your game. In first person the camera is inside the player, so rooms look smaller. In third person the camera sees more, but it needs more space to move. That is why it is worth to build one test room where you can check how the given scale works in practice. This allows you to choose the right values before you start building the rest of the level. If something feels too small, scale it up. Because in level design it is not about making the world realistic in millimeters, but about making it look realistic for the player. And remember, scale is not only important for wall height and room size, it also matters for doorways. In real life, standard doors are about 80 to 90 cm wide and 2 meters high. In games, this is often too small. That's why designers usually enlarge these doorways, sometimes to unrealistic size, to maintain a natural sense of space and avoid the feeling that the characters barely fit. But doors themselves are topic that deserves separate attention. They seem like a simple element, yet they can cause quite a few problems. In the real world, doors always have a specific direction in which they open. In games, however, we often encounter doors that open both ways. From a realism perspective, this doesn't make sense, but it is a design choice that makes it easier for the player to move, especially when the character animation is simplified and does not automatically move the character where opening the door. This way, the doors neither push the character nor pass through them during the opening animation, because they always open in the opposite direction from the player position. 
but if you want the doors to open only in one direction, like rear doors, you need to an appropriate animation that moves the player when they open the doors toward themselves, preventing collision. What type of doors will you include in your game? It's up to you, but remember a few guidelines that help maintain realism. First, doors should open into the room, never into the hallway. In real architecture, this is the basic rule. The only exception are small rooms like bathrooms or emergency exit. Those doors should always open outside the room. Second, even if you use a door that can swing both waves, if they are located on the left or right side of the wall, they should open in the direction of the nearest side wall. This way, they will not block the player's view of the room. Third, if a door is located in the middle of the wall, it's best to position its opening so that it doesn't obscure the key element. This will allow the player to immediately recognize the most important elements in a given room. This is a small detail, but it can have a significant impact on the perception of the scene. Finally, in some case, when we have doors that open both waves, those rules can be broken. For example, if a player starts in the room and enters into a hallway that only goes in one direction, if there is a wall of the left side and the path continues to the right side, it makes sense for the doors to open on the left side of the hallway. It is a minor detail, but it helps maintain the flow of movement and prevents frustration when the door blocks the player view of the path they need to follow. And since we are already talking about corridors, at first glance, they might seem simple to create. You have point A, you have point B. You connect them with straight passage and that's it, right? Well, not really. You are probably seeing those meaningless corridors in games. Narrow, empty, adding nothing to the story or gameplay. A corridor like that becomes just an empty passage instead of an experience on its own. The player work through it only to get to the other side, without any purpose, tension or meaning for the story. So let's think, why does a corridor even exist? In the real architecture, its role is to connect important rooms. In games, it's exactly the same, but corridor should lead the player, not just fill empty space. If you treat it like a filler, the player will feel that immediately. Even worse, if they have to go through several identical corridors just to reach one room. In film, there is a 7 second rule. If nothing changes on the screen for more than 7 seconds, the audience starts to lose interest. The same happens in games. If the player walks through a corridor for more than a few seconds without any change in light, sound, on composition, and there is nothing there to catch their attention, they will subconsciously start to feel bored. And that's not what we want. Before you start modeling a corridor, ask yourself, does this part of the world make sense? Does it lead the player to something important? Does it beat tension, set the mood, or it just there because something need to connect to rooms? Even a simplest corridor can have a purpose. It can connect team areas, be part of game rhythm, or simply give a player a short breather between two important moments. The next thing to consider is shape and visibility. Long, straight corridors are usually boring. Instead of straight line, try to add a small turn, a height difference or a change in perspective. This is how you create curiosity, a feeling that something might be waiting around the corner and sometimes that enough to build tension and interest. For example, look at this simple L-shaped corridor. That small turn already makes the space more interesting. The player can only see part of the path and that makes them want to check what next. If you add a bit of light, shadow, a window or a door leading to another room, that's often enough to guide the player's attention. Another important thing is variety. Not every corridor has to look the same. Changing the color of the walls using a different texture or adding a single object like a plant, a box or a lamp can completely change how the space feels. Remember, a corridor isn't just architecture, it's a storytelling tool. Broken walls can tell the story of an old building, 
Turn it off lights can build tension. Abandoned object can suggest that something happened here. This way the corridor becomes the part of the story, not just an empty tunnel. Lighting also plays a huge role. A single light can define the atmosphere. Cold light coming through a window can feel like a horror, while warm soft light can create a cozy adventure mood. Light is the one of the best way to guide the player eyes without words. And one more thing. Testing. Corridors should be tested just like full level. Walk through them as the player would in both directions, check if they feel natural to navigate, see if there is a moment when you think, where am I? Finally, don't be afraid to break the rules. A corridor doesn't have to be rectangular, perfect or symmetrical. It can be half collapse, half stairs, a bridge or an unusual column layout that creates interesting shadows. Corridors in games should be an experience, not just a path to the next area. Think about why the player goes there and what they should feel. If you add variety, storytelling details and visual guidance, even a simplest corridor won't be a bothering tunnel, it's become a living part of your world. And that's all for this video. As I mentioned, this is a bit of an experimental format, so if you like this kind of content, combining level design and environment design, let me know in the comment. I'd love to see if it makes sense to develop this idea further, maybe even a series. Also, I am curious which style of learning work best for you in this video. A technical step-by-step -step approach for scale, a practical guidelines for doors, or more storytelling and reflective style for corridors. Your feedback will help me shape future videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, see ya!